Hello, it's Ruby, and today I have another travel vlog to share, this time for none other than the humble, or not so humble, Yorkshire countryside, whose moors I fell in love with when I took a spontaneous solo trip there last week. I just took the train up, my favourite way to travel, and then arrived in my single room at Weaver's Inn. Oh, this room is so lovely. Which I would highly recommend to anyone visiting. Hello, I realised I haven't actually opened this vlog yet. I have just arrived here in Haworth, which is of course Bronte country. This is where the Bronte sisters grew up and the Bronte parsonage is just around the corner. I kid you not, like a 90 second walk away. It's currently two o'clock and I am going to have a wander around the village and I think I want to do the Wuthering Heights walk today. No better time than the present. First though, I thought I would give you a quick room tour. We've got a cute little tea station and also a few tea bags, Yorkshire tea, when in Yorkshire. Um, then this open wardrobe, which I really like, and then I went for a single room and I was expecting this bed to be a lot smaller, but it's actually really big. Look at that for a view. And then this is the other side. And I maintain this is the best place I could have stayed. I got myself a coffee from Villette. The local coffee shop is called Villette and that makes me so happy. So surprisingly, this walk is very empty. I was told that there would be hordes of people walking along, but maybe not everyone's had the same idea to do it in the rain. Even though that seems to me like the most logical way to do it. As you can see, I went through the churchyard to the area's most famous walk, a hike through the moors there which ends people. at Top Withens, which supposedly inspired Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. As in, the house was apparently based on this one. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not quite sure which way I'm going, but I'm on the moors, so I think if I just keep heading in this general direction, was actually filmed in Yorkshire. I have no idea how these form, but I'm gonna research it when I get back because it just feels very bizarre because the positions are just so chaotic. So whilst I'm walking, I thought it would be fitting to read to you from Wuthering Heights. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights is known for its vivid descriptions of the moors and especially the intense raging weather. Charlotte Bronte wrote most about rain and Anne Bronte wrote most about sun. But Emily loved to write about wind. So this extract is from the beginning of chapter two and hopefully it will encourage you to try the book. I'm also pretty sure that the waterfall's coming up because I can hear because I can hear the wash of water. Yesterday afternoon set in misty and cold. I had half a mind to spend it by my study fire instead of wading through heath and mud to Wuthering Heights. I took my hat and after a four mile walk arrived at Heathcliff's garden gate, just in time to escape the first feathery flakes of a snow shower. On that bleak hilltop, the earth was hard with a black frost. So nearly there now. That tree is where it is. Oh my gosh. It's starting to get quite cold. I'm really warm, but my hands are freezing. I feel absolutely barren right now. There's 
there's not a sign of human life. And I've been walking for two hours. And the air made me shiver through every limb. Being unable to remove the chain and running up the flagged causeway bordered with straggling gooseberry bushes knocked vainly for admittance till my knuckles tingled and the dogs howled. Whilst I was up in the moors, I also wrote a poem, retrospectively, which I thought I would read to you. I collected moments from the moors to press in my pockets, so I could keep them like the pasque flowers and poppies I still find in old books of Rackham stories. If you screamed here, nobody would hear you. I waited until the mist had dried from my fingers, and the river was still, until the day had parted and the moors, far above Haworth, were touched by nothing but the moon. But, by then, the moment had already withered. It's incredible. I'm slightly spooked, I've got to say. And the maroon heather, once red as my palms, had drowned with the sun. Only cottages remained, their lights yellow, with strips of rain where the valley should have been. The dry stone walls are there, but there is nothing in my pockets and the heather bleeds brighter in the moors, seen but not took, loved but not kept. It's 10 to six, and I'm probably about an hour and a half away, so it's gonna get dark on my way back, and I really should hurry. It's funny because I'm now starting to pass all of the things that I initially saw. Here you might remember me pointing that out earlier, and these all now seem pale, in comparison to what I just saw. How funny it is how quickly our perspective changes and how quickly we do put things into perspective. And it's a phrase we toss around a lot, you know, seeing things in perspective. I'm hoping that it's not too blurry. I'm back now, it's about 20 past seven and I'm gonna go out for dinner. If you're vegan then Happy Cow is the number one app you should think about getting. It tells me that there are two pubs with vegan options. I'm just gonna look at the menus for both and hopefully you'll dry off because you're a bit blurry. I went to Howarth Old Hall for dinner and they had so many vegan options. I was very impressed and Howarth was looking so lovely in the rain. I didn't really vlog at dinner, but I'm back now. The hotel has complimentary tea downstairs, like special tea teas. So I picked up a peppermint tea and I'm gonna make one now. It's very much needed. Good morning, it's 9 a.m. and I've just gone down for breakfast. I was planning on waking up at 6, 6.30. My alarm went off at 6.30. I woke up and I just was not feeling very good. I was feeling a bit under the weather and I really wanted to be well rested for the museum. So I went back to sleep and I woke up at eight. I'm also so glad that I did the walk yesterday because it's now really sunny. Like it was supposed to be raining today, but it looks like it's gonna be sunny. So the museum opens at 10 and I think in the meantime, I might go on a short walk. I might do the beginning of the walk that I did yesterday. I think it's a good way to start the day. What do I want to bring? I'm going to bring my Kindle. I'm reading Agnes Frey on my Kindle. Before I leave, I'm just going to make a Spotify playlist and download it of songs which kind of fit the mood of Howarth because I ran out of service very quickly yesterday. About an hour and a half in, I wanted to listen to some music, but I couldn't access anything because none of it was downloaded. So I just went on a little bit of an explore. I found a different way to go to the moors and so it was nice because I got to see different scenery. There's a cute little bridge thing going over to another field, but it really looks like private property, even though it says keep dogs in the lead, but I can't see a footpath, so I'm going to go back. Because I don't want to accidentally 
actually the best part. I did not know that. I was also thinking about this Charlotte Bronte quote, so I thought I'd read it for you. I believe in some blending of hope and sunshine, sweetening the worst lots. I believe that this life is not all, neither the beginning nor the end. I believe while I tremble, I trust while I weep. I've popped back to the room just to put my coat away. I also don't know how long to spend at the parsonage. I don't know how long people usually do because it's an all day ticket. So here we go. This is why I came to Howarth at all, to see the Bronte parsonage where the Bronte sisters lived and worked. And I didn't realize that they looked directly out over the church and the graveyard. So I wasn't allowed to film inside, but I did get some pictures. The showstopper, of course, is this table where the Bronte sisters wrote their books and all of them wrote at the same table. So just think about how much great literature was written in this space. Emily was also a keen artist and this is her artist box, which is really cool. They also each had writing slopes and this is Anne's. And I love all of the details here. For example, look how tiny the ceiling wax stamp is. Then this was known as the children's office. It's where Anne and Emily used to write their stories. And this is the wardrobe, which you see in Jane Eyre. All in all, it was amazing and I would really recommend you going. Oh, and look, when I got back to my room, they'd left me this vegan bar, which is so nice of them. They also put little things of oat milk in the fridge for me downstairs for tea. Genuinely, this place is just so lovely. I just got back from the Bronte Parsonage. I haven't actually read any of Emily Bronte's poetry. I just picked up one of the tiny penguin editions because I thought I could put this in my pocket and go out on a walk with it. Anyway, I'm going to have a cup of tea and I'll see you soon. I ventured out into Haworth village after that, which is tiny and beautiful and has been named the prettiest village in England by some. And with its quaint cobbled streets and several bookshops, I can see why this is. I just wandered around, I got some tea of course and read some more of Agnes Grey. And I also went to this beautiful, quaint, old sweet shop. So I spent the afternoon just wandering around Haworth, looking in basically all of the shops. I also had talked with so many nice people. One of the great things about traveling by yourself is I just feel you end up talking with more people than you usually would. At breakfast, I met two really lovely women who are traveling from Argentina. There's like a gallery art shop. And I bought two cards from there because the prints were really, really nice. It's called... Abraham's Gallery. This card, which is just my wall at home, and then I'm gonna send this one to my mum. I do want to go out on a walk now. My feet are still kind of hurting from yesterday, but I came to Haworth mainly as like a walking trip destination. For this afternoon's walk, I actually want to read you a poem by Anne Bronte. I'm listening to the My soul is awakened, my spirit is soaring and carried aloft on the winds of the breeze. For above and around me the wild wind is roaring, arousing to rapture the earth and the seas. The long withered grass and the sunshine is glancing, the bare trees are tossing their branches on high, the dead leaves beneath them are merrily dancing, the white clouds are scudding across the blue sky. I wish I could see how the ocean is lashing the foam of its billows to whirlwinds of spray. I wish I could see how its proud waves are dashing, and hear the wild roar of the thunder today. currently 5 30 i think i was out for about an hour and 45 minutes i also picked up this tranquini wellness drink from the whole foods here and this tastes like blue raspberry it's really good i have fallen in love with the yorkshire dales i can see how and why they inspired the bronte sisters as they did and i was listening to wuthering heights as an audiobook just on spotify um i listened to the first 
two chapters. It was so windy that I just couldn't hear through my earphones, so I just gave up on it. But she captures it so well, like at the beginning when she goes to visit Heathcliff's cottage, this kind of mist started to grow on the horizon or like down beyond the valley on the other hill. As she was talking about um, in chapter two, whether she should venture out to go to Heathcliff's, Heathcliff's cottage because it was so dreary after dinner. Um, and it felt like I was deliberately making that decision because I was like, should I keep on going? Because the storm was coming. It's so atmospheric reading or listening to Wuthering Heights where it was written and set. I did also read some of Emily Bronte's poetry. I've never read her poetry before and she's excellent. She really actually, ha her voice is very similar to Emily Dickinson and there was one of her poems on death. It's called, I think it's just called Death and it's so similar to this Emily Dickinson poem. Blow west wind by the lonely mound and murmur summer streams. There is no need of other sound to soothe my lonely stream. I've arrived at Hebden Bridge, and this here is the namesake, Hebden Bridge. Ted Hughes and Sylvia Plath actually lived here for a while, and Ted Hughes wrote a poem called Stubbing Wharf. It starts, Between the canal and the river, we sat in the gummy dark bar, winter night rain, the black humped bridge and its cobbles sweating black under lamps of drizzling yellow, and the hillsides gone straight up, the high woods, massed with tangled, wintry wet, and the moorland almost closing above us. I'm here in Heptonville, I think that's what it's called, and I'm just going to visit the church. Of course, the atmosphere was a little bit off because actually Hebden Bridge looked lovely today, but I was actually here to go to Heptonville, which is a steep walk up from Hebden Bridge. One of the really interesting things up in Heptonville is that there are two churches, which is very unusual. This one fell into ruin in the 18th century, and so it was just left to become a ruin as opposed to being demolished. Look at this beautiful old Camden church. But listen to the birds. The main thing I wanted to do though was see Sylvia Plath's grave um, so that I could pay my respects. I didn't want flowers. I just wanted to lie with my hands turned up and be utterly empty. Afterwards, I found this little cafe, which actually had so many vegan options randomly. So I got a bagel tart. And 
What are the tracks? It was Good Friday and that was an authentic mama's play. Mama's plays were a very early form of theatre and you'd have travelling companies going around to different villages and houses and they would especially come on holidays like Good Friday. Then I got the bus back to Haworth and I wanted to visit the church because I hadn't had a chance yet. The father of the Bronte sisters was actually a clergyman and so he was very involved in the church of course. Now that afternoon I needed to travel to Keithley and so I took the Heritage Railway. It's been a while since I checked in. I don't know why that journey has tired me out so much. I think it might be the heat because it is really hot and I was wearing quite a lot of layers. Like I'm still wearing a thermal underneath from my walk this morning. I bought the wrong ticket at one point. I've never bought the wrong ticket at the station, but I bought the wrong ticket. And so I got on the train and I had the wrong ticket and I had to like repurchase obviously, but it's not the end of the world. But I've just got to my hotel. I'm staying at the York Pavilion Hotel. I wasn't expecting it to be this nice. I just still can't believe I found this at the price I did. It's slightly out of the city center. It was like a 15 minute bus journey. So not far at all. Really decadent, gorgeous, rooms and it was cheaper than like the travel lodge. I'm very happy and I'm gonna give you a very quick room tour. This is the room. I didn't go out or anything that night, I just did some editing and now we're on to the final day which is Saturday which I spent in York. <laughs> I did admittedly stay in my room until checkout. I was just really tired and I also wanted to write up some journal entries of my time in Yorkshire. And then I got the bus into central York and my first stop was the Imaginarium, which is this really unique kind of dark academia shop, really worth going to. And then I queued to get into Betty's tea room. It took me about 20 minutes to get in and I got a jasmine blossom tea and a vegan scone with jam and coconut cream which was delicious and I just did some writing whilst I was eating that. I wanted to do much more writing when I was on this trip but I didn't really until the final day. Not being public is awful but I'm here at the York Art Gallery and I'm going to go and see the children's literature um, exhibition. And then I went to the Children's Literature Exhibit, which was really good, and also the main gallery, and these were some of my favourite paintings. The gallery was so good. Um, not very big, but they had some good paintings, and the Children's Literature Exhibition was actually really worth it. They had an original manuscript of Jane Eyre, also some original documents from Roald Dahl. The York Museum Gardens were beautiful and I just love all of these ruins, um, very atmospheric so again sat down and wrote and that's a very unflattering angle but I left it in because it's the only clip that I got. Then I went to Clifford's Tower and again did more writing, I'm sure that th this is the most writing that I did on the trip. I will admit that I am incredibly boring and went to Pratt to get some lunch. Here's the castle behind. Didn't end up going because the queue is really long and I actually need to leave now. And then I had a five o'clock train so I got my train back and that's the end of my trip. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you have a wonderful week.